Hey there guys, what's going on? Tyler here with Your Movie Fix, and be sure to check out the part one of this for our top five moments. We're doing Superman right now, and this is my buddy Austin. We just went over doing the top five moments for Batman, and uh, we're going to be talking about this together. So, let's get into it. What did you think of seeing Superman this time around in this movie? Um, I thought it was great. You know, it shows him still adjusting to this, this world. Well, I wouldn't say this world, but people... His reception. He, yeah, he's adjusting to people's, re, you know, either liking him or disliking him. And it you can tell it's affecting him in a huge way. It affects everything he does, whether it be with Lois, his, you know, regular rescuing, his ability to notice things. It's completely messing up his psyche, I feel like. Yeah. And, that much pressure. And you were a fan of Man of Steel. Both of us were. Did you feel like this was a good extension from, from Man of Steel, continuing off the, you know, a natural flow of Superman's story? Um... In, in certain aspects, I do. Uh, when it focuses on Superman, it does great. Yeah, But agreed. those moments where you catch Batman, it's like... For, for me, anyways, it was like it almost broke it up. Where, it like, it felt a little choppy rather than, what, like you're saying, with one smooth transition from Man of Steel to this movie. Yeah. I felt like the introduction of Wonder Woman and Batman kind of hindered his... His spotlight? His, yeah, his spotlight almost. Yeah, and, and you almost could have made... You know, an entirely... You, you could have made this a Man of Steel 2, you know, a, like a direct sequel and focusing just on, you know, Superman's struggle in this movie. You could, you know, with what was going on the Capitol Hill and the way the world looks at him. You could have had an entire movie just about that. Because I agree, I really liked all the bits of him, um, like being at home in his apartment and stuff like that. Talking with Lois, watching the news, how the world was reacting to him. I loved the Superman story, like, portion of this. And I, I, th I think it was a good extension for Man of Steel... Whether or not, you know, it got unfocused at times, but there was so much to introduce in this movie. And I feel like there's two coins to, to how you can, you know, tell Superman's story and how you can characterize him. And, you know, there's that super bright, optimistic, like, Boy Scoutish, like, Superman that we know in pop culture. And what we know in a lot of popular Superman stories, like Superman for All Seasons and stuff like that. But I, I actually... Now, would you agree or disagree that Super uh, that Zack Snyder understands the character of Superman? You think he understands him? I would agree. I, I and I, I do think he does as well. And there's people that don't, but I think yes, he he could have gone the route and focused on the Superman that we all kind of know. But I think the other side of him is that misunderstood, like God Man living on this planet, trying to fit in. And uh, there are people that think that he doesn't understand him. But it's just a different, you know, different way to tell his story and the way he's mm -hmm. fitting in with Lois. And, you know, he's still like a mama's boy. He's from Kansas and he loves his mom mm -hmm. and he loves Lois. And I think, I do think that Zach understands him very well. And I think he tells his story differently. And I think Henry Cavill plays him in a, in a very specific, like almost stoic way. Um, he's like very thoughtful and caring and he emotes a lot in his face. Yeah. He plays him a lot. Like he's the, he's the silent guardian really. In this movie, he's like that that guardian of the planet kind of thing. And so that's how I think yeah. that Henry and him like try to play him as. Yeah, because he's, he's bearing the the weight of the yeah, world on his shoulders. Because no matter what he hears or where or or like, no matter where the danger is, like in the scene where he's at the uh, Luther's reception ball thing or whatever, he what he's you know walking down to go see what Bruce is doing because he can hear the the chip in his ear, and then he catches the news in the kitchen about that giant fire or whatever yeah. and then he's just instantly gone yep you know so he re you can tell he really really cares about what's going on here he believes he is one of us just with extraordinary powers and it, yeah i mean to me that works that's awesome yes and, and, and that whole thing with him going off to the fire and all the stuff they're dealing with in the senate are, are you familiar with kingdom come that version not it, it's well it's a far it's you know it's a farther story it's a it's an elseworld story with superman and i still think that that superman is great in kingdom come but they deal with him going to the senate and superman dealing with being an outsider as a hero i mean he thinks that he's doing the right the right thing and he's looking at batman as you know he's taking things into his own hands in the wrong way and that's a big thing in kingdom come with the new generation of superheroes but it's kind of reversed because superman's the new guy in town and this mm -hmm. one but I, I think that he plays almost like that he's that silent kind of guy like in kingdom come um you know he's older mature hero even though that that's how he's trying to play it now let's go into the top five moments these are my top five and he's here to help you know illustrate things and going on and i want to know what you guys think I'm starting with number five this is one i actually i didn't like the first time i saw it and we've seen this twice now 
And it worked for me the second time around. You know, the regeneration of Superman in space after he gets hit with the nuke by Doomsday. What did you make of that whole thing? Huh. I know it's, it's, it's a clear homage to Frank Miller's Superman, but what did you think of this? Um, I think... And you don't have to say you like everything. I know. I, I think it was done much better than the way Frank Miller did it. Just nope. because <laughs> Frank Miller just... Uh, he just doesn't like Superman. There's no getting around that. He just doesn't like Superman. He's try, he trying to bitch him out in that, that story. And I feel like doing that in this movie it was kind of like a nod to that book because they get so much inspiration from it for this movie. Um, I, I don't know. I thought it was, was kind of cool. But like I said in the, in the car ride home, I don't like how weak it made him look. Like, he should be able to take a nuclear bomb. I... The guy's the guy's tough, but like he said, like you said before, um, you know, he's still super strong. But it seems like his resilience to damage is is not yeah. as much as it is. It, in the it's comics. like they didn't nerf Superman's strength in these movies, but it looks like they've kind of nerfed his invulnerability. Yeah, which is how the nuke could hit him. And you know, if that nuke hit anybody else, who knows how it would affect someone like Diana? But it's it's really just superficial damage yeah. to, to Superman. That's that's not even to say that he was actually dead when that happened because it's just a super weakened state. He wasn't dead in Dark Knight Returns. I mean, he was mm -hmm. just really weak. Um, but when he came back, he still went and, you know, whooped you know Doomsday's ass. He wasn't exactly. weakened like he was in Dark Knight Returns, which was the logic behind it, that this was an already weakened Superman that could go stand closer toe-to-toe -to -toe with the empowered Batman with that suit on. Yeah. So I like that they didn't weaken him, but it was a cool effect to see them, you know, showing. And this is kind of foreshadowing the death at the end of the movie and that he can come back yeah. from, you know, being severely damaged and stuff like that. So it, it was a weird, ugly thing. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen this whole thing with, like, <laughs> with the Michael Jackson thriller. This is what <laughs> Superman looked like when he got hit by the nuke. And it's true. It looks weird. It's jarring. It's... But it looks good, like, and I like the effect the second time around. I just have a hard time accepting the logic behind it, as cool as the thing it was. Yeah. And so, Superman is powered by the sun. This is a guy who can go and walk on the surface of the sun. Mm -hmm. what, what's a fucking star that's nothing but nuclear fusion, nuclear fission yeah. going on? So why can't... Why does the nuke weaken him? I don't understand. I, the, it's some kind of bombardment, you know, with, a, with his atoms being smashed into that... Yeah. I don't. I don't know if it's like a con if a nuke is the only thing to put out enough concussive damage to really it, hurt that's, him. That's that's what I was just gonna say. It might. Be it's like, like being pounded from yeah. all sides at yeah. once. I think is really what it is. Because because like you said, it's basically the exact same energy. Just <laughs> yeah, it's so. just exploding. And I think that's what might it might be, or it might be the logic behind it. Um, even so, I mean, he was going just. <laughs> getting the shit kicked out of him by Doomsday. He was whooping Doomsday. I don't... I felt like it was literally there just as, like, a nod to... Yeah, Dark just, just Returns, a nod to it, Dark it's not, it's not bad. To me, it's not bad. It's not good. It's just there. It was yeah. kind of like a cool Easter egg for yeah. the, the fans who read that. that and really well shot. You know, it was good yeah. imagery. And, you know, moving on to my number four uh, Superman moment is going to be when Superman goes after the Batman fight and confronts Lex Luthor in the Kryptonian ship and he's talking about, like, what have you done? What are you doing here? Uh, you've lost. I saved the girl. He's like, well... And this is where we get the line where if man won't kill a god, then the devil will do it. And this is the birth of Doomsday going on right there. What did you make of that whole thing? I... I, I thought it was good. I liked it. I Although, I... If I was Superman, I probably would have just started punching the shit out of Doomsday while he was in that encasing because i mean like or cut it he, off before like, yeah, like figured some and you know there's not really much you can do because i mean he obviously doesn't know everything about kryptonian technology because he hasn't the, even had it yeah i mean the, i mean the, the little, military's had it the little introduction that he got with his dad mm -hmm. or his you know um Jarrell. yeah he like he there's like a little bit that he got with that and then fighting the world engine um th there's that little bit of technology but he, I don't think he really knew how to. That's why I'm saying, like, I don't really blame him for kind of being a little standoffish of this yeah. hulking mass of... Well, and, and he thought the whole end game here was Lex trying to pit him against Batman. He thought yeah. that was the big thing. And then there's another whole, like, layer of strings that Lex has been pulling in creating Doomsday. And specifically, I really, what I really like about this scene is just the, you know, the imagery when it starts a fight. 
with you know Lex creates him and he's telling him that you know this is your doomsday. Yeah. Um, and you know as soon as he gets out, doomsday. If Superman wasn't there, doomsday probably would have just smeared the hell out of Lex and punched him into oblivion. Because oh, the uh, first thing yeah. he does is he goes to punch him, and yeah. Superman blocks it, and that's what I love. Um, and also the scale of Doomsday, they actually made him yeah. giant. I was afraid that they might make him just like a regular size, you know, like Zod kind of thing. But he, because you can't tell in the trailers. And do you agree now that we've seen the movie? Because it was only in that one trailer too. That is the only bit of marketing we saw any Doomsday. Do you think they should have just not had him whatsoever in the movie, um, or not whatsoever in the trailers? No marketing should have kept it a surprise. I think it would have been cool as shit to have been surprised by that because you know then it's like. Oh well, Batman and Superman are fighting. The movie's probably gonna end soon. Then it's like, oh god, what the hell other, is this thing? We got a whole nother what forty minutes of badass action, and that was cool. Um, but it, even even then, showing him in the, in the trailers, it didn't really bother me that much because by the end of the movie, Doomsday is fucking massive. He's yeah. got spikes he did and shit slightly. So uh, and he's like shooting the nuclear energy out of his face and. Uh, so it wasn't enough for me to like really complain about it. I thought I thought it just would have been yeah, a surprise. It, it would have been they more should of have a just surprise. kept him out of yeah. that one that one tiny bit they should have kept him out. Yeah. Um but still I really enjoyed that that whole confrontation with Lex and Superman in the uh, in the scout ship that worked pretty good for me. And now moving on to my number 3 moment, continue on with this whole doomsday stuff. I really liked the bit um, right before Superman's death, and really just the whole death, it worked for me. It worked for uh, a lot of people in both times we went. It worked for a lot of the audiences. Um, but this is my world. When that line kicks in, after he gets the spear, he says goodbye to Lois. I love you. He knows what he's about to do. Lois knows what he's about to do. The music really kicks in. We get yeah. the sad music. I kind of spoiled it for myself. I listened to the soundtrack like two weeks ago, and I heard that song. I was like, Oh, this is a death. Yeah. Like, this is a death song coming. So I kind of already had a feeling this was going to happen. Um, but it still worked for me in the way, you know, he just grabs the spear. He goes after him. Wonder Woman's got her lasso on Doomsday. She's pulling him. Batman's doing his thing, his contributions. He's shooting him with the, you know, with the kryptonite gas thing. Yeah. Even though Batman does nothing during the Doomsday fight, right? No, don't. I'm that's, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I know that's just how a lot of Batman fans, you know, there's that meme going around. Batman does realistically what he should do in a fight against exactly. someone like Doomsday. Exactly. And um, I'm not one of those people that feels like Batman needs to go toe to toe with Doomsday. And yeah, I, exactly. realistically, I'm like he would get annihilated. And so they I'm show like, that. They show they, him. Cha- yeah. They show Doomsday chasing Batman. Exactly. And he's, and he's like, I need to get, get the out fuck out of here and starts zipping everywhere. Which it was for me. It was cool. It showed that just how dangerous Doomsday was and how smart Batman is is to like. To the human level, yeah, to the, the hum- heroes. He's, he's like, okay, so I definitely don't need to fight him with my fists. Yes. It's like that type of thing. And so he he alters all of his tactics. And it's like, okay, well, when you get spear, I need to focus this gas grenade whenever whenever Wonder Woman's not whooping that ass. You know? yeah. So, I mean, I felt, I felt like he did great. I felt like it was awesome. He got the perfect amount of action with Doomsday. He didn't... For yeah. me, he doesn't have to go up to him and punch him in the face. He just needs to... Put, like you said, put his contribution out, and that was per- it was perfect. Yeah, and, and as far as Superman's you know portion in this fight, his stake in this fight, I really like that this was you know his final stakes. This is him showing for the second time now to the world. Everybody, look at me! I'm saving the world again. And not only that, he gets killed. He gets killed doing this. And this is an iffy thing dealing with the death of Superman. I do really love that story, but let's be honest, the only great part of the Death of Superman book is the ending fight with Superman fighting him and getting killed, which is in like the last few pages of that book. The bigger thing is dealing with um, a world without Superman in the second book, and we can see bits of that in Justice League, but I was fine with them killing him, and I was fine with him showing his sacrifice to the planet, Me and too. that's the whole thing, that is the entire point of you know that story is showing Superman's sacrifice to the planet. And, and they use it as a tool to prove to the world that he has good intentions. Exactly. And it's very different in Death of Superman in the book. I get it. That's an established Superman. The world already loves him. And th- this is them mourning their loss. But this is now the world mourning loss over someone they misunderstood. They judged him wrong. Exactly. They did him wrong. And now they come to appreciate him. Which you can see like his, uh, his, uh, gr- his tombstone which says, If you seek this monument, look around you. If you come yeah. to this Superman monument... Because of him, look around you, you still have a planet, you have the world because of this guy, what exactly. he did. And I don't, as much as I had some issues with Lois, 
being interjected in the movie. I think we could have done without the whole weird storyline with the bullets in Africa. It, I'm sure it makes a lot more sense in the ultimate cut. They could have cut out all that stuff with Swanwick mm -hmm. um, and her. But I don't, I don't know if the death of Superman would have been as impactful without having Lois there. Yeah. Because that made it for me, seeing you know his human companion getting so torn up over it. And the way his mom is reacting. And the wedding ring. That yeah. got a lot of people emotional just because yeah. of his two human weights to the earth. And I, I, that really worked for me. Did the death you know, work in general for you? It did. And I hear, I, I've watched a lot of the review videos and a lot of people don't like that. They don't like that he died. And what they don't understand is like, this is like his ultimate sacrifice where he's doing this to prove to everybody that, you know, he's here to help us. He's not here to bullshit around and, you know, hey, I'm, I'm your hero and they're not doing anything. He, this is his ultimate sacrifice. And it, to me, it works great because he's proving to every it, look at the huge crowd around yeah. that mo memorial at the end of the movie you can't say that people don't love him and that they needed to establish superman and make it better because realistically this is the dc universe it's not the superman universe and if they spend seven movies and then at the end we have superman die it's like he gets everything and you know i i yeah, know a lot I, of I don't like superman but they don't need to, you know, make him the spotlight. They don't need to make Batman the spotlight. This is about the Justice League. This is about the DC Universe and their villains and their heroes and everything. So, I felt like it was a good way to go. Yeah, it, it, was, it was awesome. I don't want to see an entire movie dedicated to an okay storyline. With, like, fantastic moment with the fight. But I don't yeah. want to see an entire movie dedicated to Doomsday. I don't think that's... I don't think it's necessary. So, moving on with the Death of Superman, I want to go on to my number two moment... Um, of Superman is the bombing at Capitol Hill um, when he's inside there he, he's he's up there to speak to the guy who got his legs you know he lost his legs in the Battle of Metropolis be, indirectly because of Superman he's blaming him and really this is Lex kind of pulling strings to get somebody in there to frame Superman to make him look even worse and this whole thing was really just um, you know a ploy to, to show that trouble follows Superman and Specifically, what I love about this scene is after the bomb goes off, and that scared the shit out of me the first oh, yeah. time when, when he just looks over very quickly and the bomb goes off. That made me jump. Yeah. Uh, I know it made a lot of other people jump, but specifically, what works so much for me is after it's going off and you just see Superman standing there in, in the ash and in the fire. And some people, I, I saw people commenting this, they said that, oh, he just stood there and did nothing. There was no emotion. Are you fucking, are you kidding me? He, he, to there me, were he looked tears. Like he was crying. Yeah. He, was, he was crying. There were tears in his eyes. And they could have played that out maybe a little longer um, yeah. to really get a better performance. But like I said, Henry Cavill emotes his face. He, he emotes yeah. pain really well. And that's what I love about that. That was a are you kidding me moment. Like, yeah. this has to just keep happening to me. Yeah. Just, I want it to stop already. He's tired of the scrutiny. And what could he have done? You, you If there's an explosion at that level, those people are dead. I'm sorry, they're mm -hmm. dead. He's not saving anybody right there. And he realized that that is a utter moment of defeat for Superman and there, he knew exactly. that there was nothing he could do right there yeah but he still puts it on himself when, like when he's on the balcony with Lois he it's the it, trouble it's, follows it's him exactly and uh, even though they, it, it's almost like a 9-11 thing with you know, the bomb goes off and they're immediately experts saying oh this is what happened like on the news yeah. they said that it was the guy O'Keefe or Keefe whatever the guy in the wheelchair they know that he's responsible but then it, the, the news later gets pinned on him well, you know, could he have done something about it? Yeah. Is there something he could have done? And he even says to Lois, um, he was upset that the bomb went off. And he's like, I don't know if I was looking for it. Was yeah. I even looking for it? Because he's just, he's so tired of being under the microscope. Yeah. I, I don't think he really wanted to be there. He, he wanted to, you know, state his case that I didn't kill those people in Africa. Um, I, and he was going to prove his case about what happened in Metropolis. And we didn't get to see that fleshed out. And I still really wish we didn't get the jar of piss. From Lex Luthor. Uh, I, I was waiting for it to well, come up. Like it was, I mean, it was funny, but I th we can both agree, and a lot of people would agree, that was really stupid. Yeah. That did not need to be in the movie. Like, just taking that out alone would have made Lex just so much more awesome. I, I yeah. liked Lex. I like Jesse's Lex, but I didn't like that stupid jar of piss. I got it. It was funny. I got the joke from the earlier conversation, but man, that was stupid. Yeah. Um, but I did really love, you know, Henry's what Henry was able to do in that little snapshot of of a performance in that explosion. Yeah. That really worked for me. And now going on to my personal number one moment for Superman in the movie was 
his mom is in trouble. He goes, and this is where I think the movie really picks up, and this is where I think the movie gets fantastic from from this point on to finish. Um, the, with Lex on top of the building, and he's got Lois. He pushes her off. Superman saves her. He goes back up, and he says, "I've already got the girl." He's like, "Well, not you think you got the girl, but really, I got your mom." And he starts throwing out these photos of his mom tied up, the writing on her witch on her face. We're gonna burn her at the stake, kind of thing. The way that he freaks out in that, just very quickly, like I said, with Henry Cavill emoting in the face, mm-hmm. his, his eyes got so wide and angry seeing his mom. Yeah. Like, his, someone has his mom, and they're, who knows who knows what the hell they're doing here? Are they raping her? Are they torturing her? He has no idea, and he was ready to kill Lex Luthor right then and there. Exactly. His heat vision was ready to go. It was primed and ready, and he says, well... If you go away, she dies. If you kill me, she dies. So this is what I'm going to need you to do. What did you make of that whole exchange? And, I, you know, what what thought, Henry Cavill did there? I thought it was great. It really showed Lex's prowess. His his tactical prowess. I mean, that is straight strategic prowess. You the, go you know, after Superman's to go mama. After, to go after Superman and, it, you know, have no no armor. You're not. He's not Batman, so it's not like he knows how to fight. knows... How to you know shoot grenades? And he, shoot he had no kryptonite. He on had him. nothing, and you have to have like a serious amount of balls to stand up to Superman like that, and to take and, his mom, yeah, and push his and, girlfriend off a building, and think yeah. you're gonna get away with it. It was, but it was, it was very good, and I, I that it, it makes me feel like Lex is just super power hungry. Like he doesn't yeah. want anybody to be above him, or maybe maybe it has more to do with like the human race. He doesn't want somebody to be better. Yeah, because Superman race. showing up means that the human race is dead. What what yeah. more can we accomplish? We can never be like a Kryptonian can. It, exactly. It's like um, there was there was some kind of interview with the uh, the the physicist the, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. With his interview when he was like when he was on the, the the news or whatever he was like, well now it's like we're not even special in the universe anymore because now there's Kryptonians and they're so much stronger than us and they have all these abilities. And, you know, it, that may have, it's almost like a Napoleon syndrome or whatever it is. You know, you're afraid of being too small or not being powerful yeah. enough. And I feel like that's what Lex has just by like when he was throwing the cards down. He, he was just like, yeah. He has like that in, in, inferiority complex yeah. when Superman shows up. And that's, that's a very Lex Luthor thing. And I, I, I although it was a little weird um, with him pulling out the timer and stuff like that, I still really enjoyed his performance. And especially in that scene, there's the way he knows he has an ace up his sleeve on Superman. Yeah. And really, I, I just love what Henry Cavill did in that moment so much. Uh, th- that That is what got me hooked. That's what, like, I, I almost got emotional seeing his face when he looked at his mom. Uh, that almost got me. And that's what got me invested in the story from then on. Um, and I know that's the, you know, that's the trigger to what starts the fight is Superman doesn't feel... He, I mean, he, he was ready to confront to crump, confront Batman. He wants to stop him. He doesn't want yeah. him doing what he's doing. But he's going to Batman uh, because he has to. He doesn't feel he has yeah. a choice. And when he goes to the, to the fight, you know, he's trying to talk to him. Bruce, you have to listen to me. I have, I'm trying to tell you this thing. And Bruce has, you know, these entirely different, you know, drives going into the fight. Exactly. He wants to kill Superman. He was ready to kill him. Mm-hmm. He, he just thinks that he's this alien. He's out of control. He saw what happened on the news. He was there in Metropolis. They had two very different motives in that fight. Mm-hmm. And Superman didn't want to do it. He didn't even want to fight him. And I really liked the way that whole thing concluded. Um, overall, I really enjoyed Henry Cavill as Superman this time around. Me Wouldn't too. you agree? I, I, I loved it. Yeah. It was great. And, and I'm really looking forward to how the death of Superman and how that's going to affect Justice League going in. But I still really love Henry Cavill's Superman. I can't wait to see more of him going forward. And I hope we get more like Man of Steel or Superman standalone movies. So anyways, guys, those have been my top five moments. What are your top five moments? Comment down below. I want to know, what do you think about this list? Do you agree with it? This has been Your Movie Fix and my buddy Austin. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed these two videos. Be sure to subscribe for more movie news, movie reviews, all that good stuff. We'll see you on the next video.